Okay, take two. Hi, Arianne. Hi, John. Hi. How are you? <laughs> All right, let's see. We're going to go live for the third time on okay. Instagram here. All right. So, checking connection. I am now live. There's probably a bit of a delay. <laughs> From LA to Toronto, there's a I little know, right? delay for some reason. Yeah. So, let's see if this works. I'm waiting to join. They're telling my followers <laughs> that I'm on live. So you should know now. You should be able to request me now. Okay, hold on. Hi, Taya, my other little cousin. Oh, that's so sweet. I'm so waiting for you and everyone to. Oh, it works. It worked? Yeah. Okay, amazing. All right, so did you request me? Arianne. I requested you and I think it's just waiting to go in. <laughs> yes. Oh, yay. Got it. Okay. So I'm going to go live with Arianne. You're going to come on in one second. I can feel it. You're not on yet. So Hi. Hi. <laughs> I have different angles to play with. I know we did it Perfect. though. I'm so excited. Let's see how much feedback we get in our devices. Is it bad? Um, so who knows? Right now it's okay. Just um, a message if it's if it's not sounding great, and we'll do. Something. And Myra from, I think if we don't talk over each other, we're better. <laughs> we'll do Let's our best. <laughs> Myra from Italy is on. That's cool. Um, so uh, Celio Bordin is also in uh, Zoom. Uh, the Zoom room information is on the flyer on Instagram. And he is channeling our live chat into live art. Yes. I can't wait to see that. I know, it's so beautiful. I love it. So what is that process? He channels. <laughs> it's very mysterious. He's a medium, you know. I do like uh, to think all things mysterious, so. I'm yeah. How see the end result. How are you? How's Toronto? How's quarantine? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Toronto is good. It's a beautiful sunny day today. It's not as warm as we want it to be. Um, as a Torontonian, I have to talk about the weather. This is all we do as Canadians. Um, and it's not as hot <laughs> as we want it to be. Um, but, um, you know, like with everything in mind, um, really, I, I can't complain. Um, you know, uh, we have a great backyard that we can spend some time in. Um, and, you know, it's, we're kind of enjoying slowing down a little bit um, and not getting, trying to get too stressed out about, you know, all of the things that come along with this lockdown. Um, but it's, it's interesting. It's, it's, it's weird. <laughs> it's a weird time. How about LA? How about you? How are you doing? I'm good. I mean, it's, it's a very, I just keep saying potent. You know, it's like what you and I were talking about the other day of just like these different energies of, um, oh, you just turned it down. That's going to help. Good girl. Yay. Um, these different energies of like feeling really excited about the shift and, um, and the creativity and just being connected in these new ways, but then also feeling the heaviness and the transition and the the destruction and just kind of the cycle of life that's really being shown to us right now. You know, can you Absolutely. speak to that? Cause, cause yet the other day you were really feeling the feels of that. <laughs> I'm feeling all of the feels. And it's funny because today I, I feel like I had ups and downs of emotions all day. I went to bed really early last night. And then when I woke up this morning, I was, the sun was shining and I was like feeling really good. Like I just kind of went, came out of bed, like a cartoon character. And I was <laughs> you know, but like, you know, little like birds around my head. And then, um, I don't know what, what it was, but all of a sudden I just sort of started feeling this weight on my shoulders of like the reality of it all. 
Um, and then I did some yoga and I felt better. And then an hour later I felt not good again. And then I went outside and I got some sun on my face and I started to feel um, a bit better. And I guess my, my point being is that um, for me anyway, it's been, if I keep focusing on like, you know, business as usual, so to speak, is when I start feeling stressed out. But when I kind of allow myself to feel those feelings and like, um, you know, understand that like, this is an unprecedented kind of thing right now and the whole world's going through it together. And, um, you know, it's sort of forcing us to, to go into our thoughts a little bit and I'm not resisting them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm trying to just go through those feelings. Um, I love that saying the only way out is through. You just got to go through it, you know? Um, so once you're on the other side, like there, there are certain days where I feel more connected to myself than I ever have been in, in a long time. Um, I know my husband, Michael, feels the same way too. It's kind of nice to reconnect with, with a sense of who you are beyond what you thought your life was when things get flipped on its head, right? So yeah, my feelings are a little discombobulated, but I'm accepting that. <laughs> Do you, we need to take a breath? <laughs> are you okay? <sighs> yeah. yeah that's all you need sometimes you just need to stop and take a breath or two and I think allowing is like a really big theme just kind of like and, and also like you said you can't often go around the muddy water to get to the clear water you do have to go yeah. through it you know and just know and trust that there is clear water on the other side you know, um, exactly. Yeah. I wanted to also let people know a little bit about our backstory and how we yeah. came into each other's <laughs> lives. Um, so we met about 10 years ago in Toronto. I was um, finishing my first film, Billy Bates, which is an art film. Yep. And you were newly dating your now husband. Yes. Who was running the bar at the Thompson Hotel that my producing partner and I frequented <laughs> back in the party days. And I just remember when Mike introduced me to you and it was like, your aura was so radiant and our hair was kind of similar. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Mike had already kind of been our, you know, our friend for a little while, but yeah. there was like a magnetic, definitely um, situation with, with me and you, I feel like. And, the creative vibes ensued and then lo and behold you became accredited associate producer on our Mary Pickford film but more than that have been such a, an important kindred spirit and creative support and artistic voice and really the whole entire process from like kickoff party with a cast that was <laughs> in development and wasn't the cast in the movie all the way through to showing sure. up on set and then putting me up in your apartment during post-production and giving your thoughts on music and different things. And it's just been a really special relationship for me. And um, artists uniting is a theme that you and I go into often. And that's yeah. a lot to do with why I've created this chat series and, and bringing artists together. So whether our backstory or artists uniting or whatever inspired you and what I just said, can you speak, speak to any of those themes? Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, the, you know, I think just the fact that it's 2020, um, I think everyone this year was sort of reflecting on the last decade of their lives and um, a lot has changed in these last 10 years, I think for most people, um, the world's changed a lot, but I can't believe how fast 10 years feels like it's gone by, um, you know, since we've connected on that too. And it's funny because somehow the Mary Pickford project almost feels like the glue of a lot of extra conversations or like life moments, right? It's mm -hmm. sort of like on the, the background of it. Um, and I knew... <laughs> And I knew about Mary Pickford before, um, you know, she, she, as you know, America's sweetheart, um, but even though you know, she's Canadian, yeah, well, she's got some ties to Toronto, which is really interesting. Right. And so the whole way we connected on that as well. And the girl with the curls, right. Like mm -hmm. her being known as that, there was a lot of parallels there. 
Um, and, you know, the idea of her being sort of like the first, maybe not the first, but the, she was the first movie star really in, in like mm -hmm. a, you know, a female like presence like that. And um, she was known around the world before, you know, the internet, before television, before, I mean, this was, this was something, she was such a big star in those days. And I know you and I often talk about what if she was alive today, right? Um, what would, and we can't really make those comparisons, but like when you compare her stature to, you know, some of the artists like on Instagram these days, um, mm -hmm. it's completely, you know, there, there are some, there are some, um, you know, artists that are maybe in their teens still that are big on TikTok and Instagram and I have no idea who they are and they have, you know, millions and millions of followers around the world that respect and love them and um, I've never heard of them before. So I think things in that capacity have changed a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> but, because back um, in her day, uh, she was the only one for a while that was that big. So it was like, yeah if you wanted to admire a, a movie star for a minute there, it was only her. She was coined, you know, bigger than the queen and stuff, but. She, and that brings me back to the power of image, right? Like visual culture and just like um, recognizing people's faces as celebrity and um, she, her face was everywhere. And, and what, I, what I always found really interesting and that I didn't know before is that she was kind of the first one to, and I, you know, you can speak to this more, the first one to be um, uh, showcased by her name, right? Like her photo and her name yeah, as an actress. And then that's kind of like the start of that celebrity. So I, I thought that was super interesting as a storyline to her. Um, but our, and, 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 and she founded United Artists, which is why yeah. these, you know, chats have been so, I think, important um, during this time when we're living in this virtual space, how do you feel about the creativity during this time? And what do you think about artists uniting and the, the importance of that to, to elevating humanity, you know? <laughs> it's interesting because, because right now, um, especially with what everyone is going through with the current situation with COVID and all of that is that, um, people are at home watching movies, listening to music, um, you know, they're really um, absorbing a lot of um, creative energy from the artists in the world. And uh, as we know, artists are usually the ones that are the lowest paid and, um, you know, don't really have the benefits and things like that. And what I've been hearing um, within my artist community here in Toronto is that artists are uniting to sort of have this unified front of being like, listen, we are very important um, to the global culture and we wouldn't have as much, um, you know, it wouldn't be as interesting without it, you know, but like we need that art and we need artists to unify and to have a united front and not compete with each other as, as much as they try to do. And I think a lot of artists sometimes do that because um, we feel like there aren't enough opportunities to go around. So I think that that's a big part of the com conversation too. It's like when we can see that one artist's work shouldn't take away from another's, right? Mm -hmm. And that we should, we can all empower each other. I, I think that that's what I'm seeing a lot of these days. And I, I hope that that's something that continues. Yeah, I agree. And I just think like the power, the, the, like the, vib the vibrational, actual power that reverberates in the in the collective when artists are able to come together on these themes right and and talk about each other's work and talk about what are you exploring what am i exploring and to find that common ground so there's not such a like fragmentation you know yeah. it really is united artists it is why pickford and chaplin and them started united artists so that artists could unite and creative integrity could be you know at the forefront um yeah what are you working on now? Because you, to me, are an artist. I know you wear many hats in terms of like a day job and, and side projects and just like a whole array of things that you do. But what has your heart right now? Um, I'll, I'll get into <laughs> what has my heart right now. <laughs> but I think like for me and, and um, you know, 
years ago I started, Mike and I started our, our company name, which is Art and Industry, that was inspired by, uh, you know, like uh, German art movements and, and, and all of that. But um, the name kind of representing that my struggle, like I, I always feel like I'm kind of in the middle of this place that's art and like business or art and, and industry, so to speak. And so I'm always trying to strike the balance between the two um, because I, I realize that unfortunately, <laughs> for one, sometimes we have to have um, the other. But on the other hand, too, there there is some sort of art to to business that I kind of really appreciate as well. Um, but of course, you know, for me, biz the business side of things is more of a tactic to, to sort of get things out and, and have things um, maybe making money so that they can keep happening. But ultimately, I'm only really interested in the creative um, <laughs> and in the storytelling aspect um, of projects. And, and you know, I, I, <laughs> I really enjoy that the younger generation online these days is really, they really seem to be exploring their their inner being and they're expressing themselves even though we you know it doesn't seem that way i feel like there's a lot of um movement around that these days so i like to take why in what's it, happening sorry Would sorry you, why doesn't it seem that way like what do you mean by that like i brought up TikTok before for example mm -hmm. and it's it's so easy to make fun of like technology and apps like that but i mean i'm telling you i've never seen kids like this express themselves publicly like that in front of their peers and, and like the world like uh, this is can you this give an example I, I, um i i you just have to go on tiktok babe <laughs> <laughs> you mean like there's some like authentic like there's yeah. some stuff that that's moving you like in well maybe it's it's I guess what moves me are these movements of like trends and like these artistic movements that seem to happen without anyone necessarily starting anything and forcing it. So I think that that's interesting. And I guess I bring that up only because um, in a lot of my work, I like to incorporate the things that I observe and, and then I, I tend to put that together into a trend forecast, whether I am doing that on purpose or not. Um, and then sort of coming up with something that is like a, a synthesis of everything. Um, I just completed, um, a sh um, I don't know what to call it, Jen, but it's a short fashion film, but not a film, um, with Vivek Shreya. Um, and a uh, good friend, Talia Macedo, brought this project over to me and we filmed it in November. And it has an Italo disco space identity quantum entanglement fashion theme. <laughs> and I have been feeling very like, fuck it. Like, I don't want to try to produce content that I think will be popular because that's what I do for work. And I know what content will be popular. So you're but content I'm sort of in a like producer and like. so I'm a director of content and creative at uh, Jones Media in Toronto and we mm -hmm. do um, we produce and we direct and we um, enable content um, to be created um, if, if it's user generated content um, and we create storylines and narratives for brands and um, we're very good at doing that and I'm very good at doing that um, but I do prefer and I do come to life when I have no rules and no parameters and I can kind of just mm -hmm. let my mind go. Um, I'm really into um, um, outer space <laughs> and quantum physics. And weirdly, I incorporate that into a lot of my um, subplots in my work. Why is that weird? <laughs> quantum <laughs> physics I, is amazing. <laughs> it's so brilliant and so layered and... Um, eye-opening and and I think contains so much like valuable information you know it it's who we are and it's what we're about and we don't like understand our universe as well as we will one day um but we our whole existence is a mystery um our whole universe is a mystery and any type of science or work that um tries to figure it out I'm down with <laughs> And I think there's something beautiful and artistic about it, you know? I mean, the project that I just completed, like, you know, really has to do with the idea of us all being stardust. And that maybe brings it back to Mary Pickford, you know? It's like, what, 
we call these celebrities stars, right? Because they shine brighter than everybody else, basically. Um, but really, we're all... Or the, the illusion is that. <laughs> the illusion. But ultimately, we're all actually made of stardust, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's easy to forget that where we come from, we're all tied to each other um, chemically, biologically, cosmically. And I think that that's a really beautiful thing. Absolutely. And it is very artistic. I mean, it's creation um, in its finest form. And yeah. we are creators every day with the way we construct our, our lives and also our perception and how we process information. Like, yeah. how do you take in what the media is dishing out? and who do you listen to that's sort of like paint that you're putting onto your own personal canvas you actually have the power to filter information not listen to things use your intuition or go deep into the vortex of the media like these yeah. are all sort of tools and concepts and it's part of the matrix <laughs> so yeah. it's like what do you do with all that so i love that you're exploring that and i love that you did um work around barbie mm. because barbie is iconic mm -hmm. and can you talk about your relationship to barbie like what she represents to you why you explored it and and some of the other like symbols that you used in that work notably like a rope around her neck or <laughs> you know like powerful yeah. archetypal mythological <clears throat> subliminal messaging kind of not subliminal <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah exactly but i love um, it so much i love it so much so i started working with um i mean it's kind of there's a few different like aspects to it i guess um when Wait, I, was I just have to say one thing my instagram is frozen so anyone who's like saying anything on here i can't see your comments but I'm oh super, really yeah it's all good though i mean not a reason to stop but just a reason to say thank you do for you joining and sorry <laughs> do you want to refresh it or you think it's okay no because it tends to happen i think okay. i need to get an iphone <laughs> iphone apple are you listening um so i mean with the with the barbie thing it's it's funny because when i was a little girl i actually really loved playing with barbie dolls like i just mm -hmm. i had a ton of them i loved them they all had names they all had different storylines you know I, I really did love that um and then you know my my mom who you've met and you know um and all of her friends are all you know very smart women um that have opinions and are very you know um i mean they're feminists they grew up in the 60s and 70s and they you know they they fought for what they have and um they really wanted to pass on um information about um you know being a woman and what that means and how we're represented and so they would always sort of take me down these rabbit holes of like magazine covers and like de disseminating why they're like that and so mm -hmm. even as a kid i was sort of aware of that weirdly playing with these dolls um and and then when um i was a teenager 17 18 i started modeling and that was always a decision for me that like i always wanted to do that um but my parents were always um of the mindset of you know you've got to go to school and your brain is what matters and everything else is sort of like an, an extra bit of that and i think i kind of held that I held on to that somehow like um that it that physical beauty was important maybe but uh not the be all end all um and then so you know like you thought a, the, intel the intellect was more so important more interesting yeah um was and, barbie a feminist well so here's the thing like why not right it's it's, yeah. it's, compli it's complicated so i guess i was exploring that in the same way i felt very um I felt I had a complicated relationship with my modeling career as well. Um, but ultimately, um, you know, I started using her, using the doll in some of my work only a few years ago because I was, you know, my parents were cleaning out the basement. They were like, if you want these dolls, come pick them up. Otherwise they're going in the trash. And I'm like, hold on, leave them. So I came to pick them up and I started using them as lighting tests, like really mm -hmm. just doing some like figure, figure photography and stuff like that. 
and um, I started really liking what the photos look like. Um, and then I started really exploring this, you know, uh, concept of identity, even through dolls, right? The, the idea of outfits, fashion, how do you showcase your identity through your clothes or your hair color or your haircut or all of that. And so um, I, I started using the doll as like a stripped down version of itself. A lot of them were in a box mm -hmm. empty or they had ripped clothes from you know, what I had put them in when I was six years old and I didn't touch them. I kind of just left them like that. Um, and then I did a show, sold all of them. And then a few years later, I did another one where I, I wanted to get a little darker. <laughs> so I don't know if you could see the Barbie hanging on my wall. Behind yeah. Me. It's basically, I mean, we can see it on <laughs> Zoom and not on Instagram, but it looks great. It's a six foot Barbie. Um, but I did post it on Instagram today, people. So that's perfect. <laughs> she, uh, I tried to make it um, like a biblical uh, reference mm -hmm. um, to the Virgin Mary, to Jesus Christ. Um, I'm, you know, uh, I, I put a metal um, wire around her mouth because I think even again, bringing, coming back to the idea of celebrity and, and stars, it's like, we want to put people up on pedestals for their beauty, for like however they appear, whatever. But then ultimately we don't really want to hear what they have to say, especially women, right? It's like in, in, in culture, especially in pop culture, it seems like we want to see what they look like. We want them to perform this role, but if they go outside of certain parameters that are deemed acceptable, then it's a whole other thing. So this is <laughs> all of that in that. <laughs> this is the second time that Jesus and Barbie came up in the same breath. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I think I need to look deeper into that. Like there's something going on there. Um, I think it's, it's, you know, listen, the, the, the Michael Jordan documentary is out now too, right? It's, I think it's the idea of like icons. I icons. mean, don't, they don't have to be exact comparisons, but if you showed a picture of any of these things or people, everyone around the world would know who they are. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, right? Yeah, and what they represent to each person is so different. It's like we really, we really turn them into the icon, I think, you know, yeah. like, like if Jesus was like a hippie that was exploring and truth seeking and from what I heard, learned how to meditate in yeah, India, <laughs> you know, like um, how he became an icon is like so it's just, it's so fascinating. You can almost just really use the power of your imagination to um, go into that. And that's not to diminish, you know, what, how people relate to him and connect with him and, and no, what he represents so. to them. That's just to say that like, there's humanity in Barbie and Jesus even, you know? And, and, uh, and depth know. and depth. Yeah. And I mean, the idea of PR I mean, religion has strong PR as well. <laughs> oh, it's like the best I mean, branding ever. Yes. So as I as I got more, you know, involved in the modeling world and then pivoted into production, film, advertising, you really start seeing that like nothing's out there unless it wants to be, right? Like you know mm -hmm. this too. Like with celebrities too, it's like they're not in the news unless they want to be. Okay, sometimes it does happen if there's pure talent, but there's a big PR machine. So, you know, it's behind the scenes, but it's very much there. So I've always been interested in the PR machine as well. Interested in terms of how it works or? In how it establishes a narrative. It yeah. kind of di dictates how people ultimately feel about someone, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, and it's a relationship yeah. with the, yeah, in that relationship with the public, like. Right. Which yeah. may have very little to do with the actual person. Exactly. You know, and that was something <laughs> Mary Pickford didn't know. She thought yeah. when people admired her, that they must know her. She her. actually, she right. didn't know that they were projecting, you know, an image that, she didn't embody she didn't really relate to the right. way that they saw her and eventually that had to do with the act of her cutting off her curls to just say like i'm not the little girl you know just like britney spears shaving her head it's like yeah it seems so mundane 
and also so dramatic at the same time. But it's such a, the hair is such a part of your identity and they crafted these whole images around it, like Cleopatra or I'm sure all these different beings and deities, you know? Yep. And one, one question that came to mind today was like how, this idea of something being larger than life, what is, what can be larger than life? I mean, imagine life, life, life is all, life is creation, life is all encompassing. So mm -hmm. we're like, wow, larger than life, it's like kind of an oxymoron or something paradoxical because it's like, it can't be larger than life, it's, it's of life. Right. You know, so we, we are life. It is our ideas, our life, our projections, our life. Right. Um, that's where the humanizing comes in. Cause it's like, okay, how do we like level that kind of out in a way, you know, yeah. where we almost like take our power back, take our individual power back. So in fact, we can like inform the collective in a more meaningful way. Cause when you have your own like self power, Mm -hmm. you're able to project a kind of authenticity a kind of like love you know because you're not feeling beholden or enslaved by a system or what you're not by looking to people on the outside who don't even feel like they are that either you know so it's just like this crazy cycle spiral thingy I don't know yeah I think self-awareness is big I think people don't allow themselves to like feel their truth about who they are whether or not they they like who they are in that moment of time um and I think that um it's it's I think people you know especially like right before things happened with all of this right I mean life is going crazy people like things are moving, moving fast you know it was like how fast can you sell how fast can people buy like consumerism this and that fast fashion da, da, da. and combine that with social media and everyone's online showing off like their persona as they deem it to be right and really yes. um it's interesting because we have the ability to sort of choose our own avatars these days. I mean, we can choose the, the, the mask we wear and the kind of image we want to put forward because we can create it digitally. Um, and then I think maybe sometimes it might happen that there's a disconnect between, again, like a, a comparison between our public selves and our, and our private selves. So even if you're not on a billboard, but your Instagram account and like, you know, your other accounts kind of show you in this other way, mm -hmm. you're, that's still, you're still uh, experiencing a public sense of yourself. Right. Absolutely. Um, and so I think maybe now it's funny, actually the idea of like the mask mask that people are wearing these days. Um, it's, it's supposed to protect you but it also hides your identity from everybody else. So it's like, if you can't, if you're not you, if your face doesn't represent you, then what represents you when you're out in public? Like, I, I keep thinking about all these different little uh, details and I, I don't know, but I think also the, the fact that- But how do you define identity, like in that particular statement? Um, when people are, you mean like their identity like the, tied like the to their faces. appearance? Because you, you, are you identifying the physique as identity? Well, I mean, look at our ID cards, look at our driver's licenses. Like it's funny in our yearbook photos, it's like we, we've really chosen, I mean, the face is kind of what showcases who we are. Um, but I wonder. I don't feel like the person in my driver's license. <laughs> Well, and we, maybe most of us don't. And so we feel like, why do you, like, I, I don't know. It's interesting. It, but, um, well, you know yeah. what, this yeah. brings me to something I'm, this is going to like take us on a sidebar, but it's totally cool. connected. Yeah. It came up in the movie Esoteric Agenda. Um, or no, sorry, the director of Esoteric Agenda, a different okay. movie that he did, um, that the driver's license is actually a contract with a, go a government basically. And when your name is in all caps, like it is on a driver's license, mm -hmm. it's actually not you as the natural individual person. It mm -hmm. makes you a corporation. It makes you a, 
a, an entity outside of your natural being. And there's these natural laws that actually state we don't have to be governed mm. by the laws that are enforced upon us. You actually have the right to not have a driver's license. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you have one, you basically become like a possession of the government, the system, however you want to look at it. So it's interesting yeah. that you brought up the picture on the driver's license because according to natural law, the driver's license isn't even yeah. who you are at all. Right. <laughs> but so I'm just taking it to that like yeah. other level, which is so interesting, you know. And then and then, you know, you go. So into are you other... talking about false identity, which is a form of identity? Sure. Yeah, I think I think it's all included these days because um, I don't actually think it's as crystal clear as people think it is. Right. It's like, not. That's why, it's, that's <laughs> why we can not. keep going. You can keep going in and in and in and in and in. You know. But you know, look, there's there's other countries um, where you know your 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 identity is your phone, like whatever chip or whatever you know um, code that is assigned to your phone. Um, you know, even like with with apps like WeChat and things like so that. So like the legal like, identity, not your identity as in your essence, your truth, like who you no, are. Yeah, no, right. it's exactly. And so, so just to clarify. Is, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, of course you don't you don't identify with that, but that is how um, people identify you. How I, yes, 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 yes other people. Exactly. Um, so it dehumanizes you actually. Yeah. Yeah. I I can, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a categorization yeah. system, <laughs> ultimately. Mm -hmm. um, but, well, that's the thing. I mean, who are you without all of that stuff? I guess that's why people meditate, you know? I guess that's why people try to do things that they're scared to do or, like, do things outside of their comfort zone um, to sort of see how they feel as that new person. Go off the grid. Go off the grid. Um, retreats. Um, people dye their hair, you know, from black to blonde. People like plastic surgery is so big these days, right? There's and what's interesting about plastic surgery these days is <laughs> we can't call that. it. <laughs> Hold on, <laughs> it's not as weird as it sounds. But like, it's not I won't weird. Even, I love it. I love you. I love it. I won't even call it plastic surgery, but it's the Instagram face. The rise of the Instagram face, right? Like we're all up on screen. So what are we looking at? Like our foreheads, our eyebrows, our cheeks, our lips. And so <laughs> a lot of young women are, are starting to just, um, you know, plump up their lips and like get some fillers and stuff like that to look like the filtered version of themselves. So maybe then eventually it's like, what is the filtered version of you and how much do you want to actually let in? Like maybe it's like a scale, right? Like maybe it's like blinds, like you only let in. Yeah. A certain amount of light when you want to so maybe it's not one thing or another maybe it's like something you pick and choose <laughs> well you're into quantum physics so clearly it extends into so many realms um but what about nostalgia well it did it's weird that you brought that up i just posted an article today on nostalgia did i share that no today? way oh you? no uh -uh. i just i just wrote um kind of a, a piece you can call it a trend forecast you could call it a blog I don't know but on how on uh, the rise of nostalgia that I that I think people these days are really there's a return to nostalgia and people are um like I identifying mean, with the past right a bit yeah and people I mean so it's proven that moments of distress can actually trigger nostalgia um, because it's like your system your body kind of knows as like a defense mechanism that you think about like more good thoughts from the past it can actually help your body through a stressful period um and so so that's why even um these days people are baking banana bread and people are you know making old family recipes at home and revisiting their grandmother's closets and like um you know doing staycations to the old camping ground that they used to go to with their families in the 80s you know like, are you gonna do something <laughs> with nostalgia I feel like well, you're curating. Are you crafting something? Well, that's a big part of what Nona Life is about. It's sort yes. of re revisiting. Um, um, what is Nona know? for the people that don't know? Nonas are Italian grandmothers, um, <laughs> and they are badass. Um, just as you know, historically speaking, they were part of one of the 
biggest diasporic um, migrations in the world, leaving Southern Italy and going everywhere to, you know, from everywhere from uh, to New York, Montreal, Toronto, Melbourne, like all over the world, Rio. Um, and uh, Italian nonnas are known to be very strong. <laughs> They make the best food. They like make the best dresses. They tend they're to like they're best. goddesses. They're they goddesses. just they're strong. They fought fascists. They like you know probably killed a few people at some point in time. And so south. you have known a life, or right? I have a, an account called that. Um, well, the account is that known a life, but the brand is known a life. Yeah. So it's like really revisiting like the approach to life that the nonas had, simplifying right, real food simply done but like made the best possible mending of old clothes um you know um getting together with family and friends um you know try to bring back that sunday supper situation mm -hmm. even if it's not with immediate family even if it's just with people that are in your vicinity um, i think people are seeking a time even if they have so people have amnesia right when it comes to remembering things so like they tend to forget the bad stuff and then they remember the good stuff that's why people say things like you know they don't make things like they used to remember the good old days kids these days da 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 every generation does it um but with the shit show that's happening right now no wonder people are looking for some simpler simpler times right I'm looking at Chelio's art piece and I'm like, and yes, simpler times and his art piece <laughs> represents some kind of major complexity, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, but I'm just Very like, cool. wow. Yeah. Um, Chelio Bourdin, follow him. It's like, whoa, <laughs> very good. Um, <laughs> so I pulled a, I pulled a card from a, from a goddess deck Ooh. for us. And what came up was, um, actually so relevant it feels almost uncanny is it barbie stay true and be in your power is the name of the card it looks like that and it talks a lot about spiritual sovereignty which again mm. like just totally connects to this idea of independence so when i say like stay true and be in your power or spiritual sovereignty, what comes up for you? Like if you were to feel liberated, if you were to feel like you had your power, hmm. what could that look like, whether metaphorical or literal? Um, I love the term spiritual sovereignty. I've never heard that before. Really? I, I, I love yeah. it too. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's really powerful because I think that that's what it comes down to ultimately. Um, even if, day to day other people in your circle may not grasp who you are or understand who you are um and you know we get beat down with like the mundane sort of everyday uh, things of like normal life and society um but ultimately our spirit goes beyond that so um i i don't i think i'm pretty i'm a spiritual person um in a subtle way my friends describe me as whimsical. <laughs> so to me, it's like the true spirit of, of, of being free is just these moments of peace, you know, and we don't know when they will occur. But if you're open to feeling peaceful, then I think you will find peace um, through the things that make you feel good. Like if you can get rid of whatever feelings of judgment that people you perceive are putting on you, which like growing up and even in, you know, in my twenties, I probably felt like people's judgment did hinder, uh, you know, creative development and all of that. As soon mm -hmm. as I was like, fuck that, um, I'm going to go with my gut feeling, which I actually think is connected to spiritual sovereignty. When you have a strong gut feeling and you don't ignore it. Mm -hmm. I think going with your gut feeling and your emotions and not downplaying them, I think that that's an aspect of it. Mm -hmm. In terms of like how you express yourself and how you create. Yeah, yeah. And, and ultimately, you know, I think you feel it if you are a DJ and you're lost in your set for three hours. And if you're a painter and you're lost in your painting for three hours. And, you know, this beautiful work that I'm seeing on, on the screen here, it's kind of like there's a flow there that like is coming out of you 
And you yeah, and also, them. and also for people that don't identify again as an artist, it's like, like they say, it's, uh, or like I say a lot, um, mastering the mundane, you know, finding the art in literally like washing your hair or doing the dishes, like being present to whatever you're literally touching in any given moment can actually yeah. bring you joy. But it, cause if you're thinking about other things and trying to be focused, it doesn't work, you know, but you can actually enjoy doing the mundane. If you bring all your presence into that moment, you can discover yeah. beauty in the, in the soap, <laughs> you know, it's just like, there's so much there, right? It's, it's so funny you say that because like, that's what I love. Like elevating the mundane is the space that I play with mm. it, right? And I love that. And we actually haven't talked about that in the past, I don't think, but it's something that I speak about with a couple of artist friends for sure. And I think you're right. Like sometimes the best things are in front of us, right? Mm -hmm. Like with Nona Life, it's like, I remember, you know, sitting in the garden, like with my dad, just like peeling a pear and just like giving like, you know, a slice of pear every once in a while. And it's like, I did that a little while ago. I was in my garden, I was slicing a ripe pear and there was a bird and I'm like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. And it's just the simplest thing. So simple. <laughs> we're just like, we're so, our nervous systems are overworked, you know? We, so. We're seeking way too much. We have it all. And uh, I think this yeah. pandemic has been like a nice way for us to find that gratitude even while we're praying for this to pass mm -hmm. and for people to be okay. Um, but to find that gratitude just in the simplest things, like you said, that's a perfect message. It, it, it's what, and once you start you. appreciating those moments though, I think um, you unlock something. That's the best yes. way to describe yes. it. Your, like, your superpower starts. Yeah, uh, Myra is saying beauty is everywhere when we look. It's everything is there when you're when either you look or you're open to receiving it, right? Yeah. I mean, even bringing it back to when I was younger and I was, you know, um, I was modeling and I was that was my full time thing and like everything was good and I was in fashion and all that. You know, like eventually I just realized because I was in the industry so young mm -hmm. that you can't win. You can't beat this industry. It's always going to beat you. You can't keep up with the latest fashions. There's always a new season and there's always a yeah. latest trend and there's always something cooler and something more expensive and something more exclusive. So as soon as you get off that wheel, you're free. You don't, yes. need, to, you don't need to go there. And you're like on your own, you're making your own decisions. You don't have to like cater to that. And even if you do appreciate it, you're just not on this wheel it's, and you don't yeah. need it. And just remembering that life is an adventure, that every moment is an unfolding. Yeah. Every moment is a piece of art, whether you're literally creating art or not, just to see what's around you, what you're feeling, what's in you. Um, that's it you know? Yeah. Yeah. Just, especially these days, it's like, we, I think people are running out of distractions. Like, yeah. okay, you finished that bottle of wine. Okay. You finished six seasons of that show. Like, okay, you, you know, did this, you did that. And now what? And now you can't run away anymore. <laughs> Those are self-medicating devices, you know, which yeah, are, they can be fun. That's super fun. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, but in excess, it's, uh, yeah, it's good to take that, take break, breaks from those things, I'm sure, you know. Yeah. Well, cheers. <laughs> salute. It's happy oh. hour for you. It's middle of the day for me, so I salute your beautiful it's red almost, wine. It's almost six o'clock, yeah. One glass Yay. of red wine. One glass of red wine a day I have introduced into my repertoire. No, it's perfect. It's beautiful. <laughs> I love Makes that. me think my grandparents who took one aspirin and one glass of red wine a day. Cause perfect. Um, is didn't there go to the any, doctors, that's just what they did. Are there any like <laughs> closing words before we turn off Instagram and go to Chelio and Zoom so he can tell us about his art? Um, I don't know. <laughs> 
thank you so much for (laughs) doing this. Like, I love just our banter. I value you so much. And um, I look forward to more collaborations. Me too. And to our movie coming out. Yes. Oh my goodness. I know. I, I, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited yeah. for, always with you. There's a journey. So I'm, I'm always here for the journey. <laughs> you are, you really are. Yeah. We're both a little whimsical, I think. <laughs> a little whimsical. You can't be a little whimsical. You're either whimsical or you're not. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> Thanks for giving me a place to live when I've needed it. <laughs> um, you're welcome here anytime. Thank you. All right, I'm going to go off Instagram live. Is that cool? Okay, yeah. And we'll stay on Zoom. But thank you, everyone. I can't see who's on, um, but I felt the presence of people. I think I had a bad angle and it was dark, but hey, I'll get it. I'll make it back. Oh, I can see your eyes now. Beautiful. All right, we'll (laughs) we'll replay the live anyway. All right, I'm going to go off. Okay, I love you. Bye, I love you too. Ciao. Okay. Bye, guys. Um, Okay, going... I don't know what just happened. Let me make sure I'm actually, oh, I'm still on. How do I get off? Oh, end. There's end. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Oh, there was 40 viewers at the end and I don't know who any of them were. Oh, really? (laughs) Um, Chelio, are you there? Eccomi, It's, it's here. Can you tell Hello. us about your art? Yeah. Ciao. You worked so quickly today. It's really beautiful. Yes. Yes. We wow. have. We have today. Uh, hello. Hello. Hi. All my friends in Italy say kiss you because they love you, and then a new friends American love you too. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody loves you. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. No one loves you. Today it's coming uh, a beautiful composition to Jennifer and uh, uh, Ariane. Ariane. Sorry, because <laughs> no, because when I when I sketch, uh, I'm I'm very deep, and then I try to keep hunting all energy about a person. And then we are a composition to the many person from thousand years. Oh, People wow. Like your ancestors. Yes. Inside <laughs> us, we have uh, many persons, right? We are composition. And then today is very beautiful mix to Ariane and Jennifer. And this work is coming, starting horizontal, but it's necessary later to uh, to work in vertical and becoming a uh, this beautiful person. We have higher because this uh, you girl have, have a lot of higher, <laughs> a lot and, of hair. <laughs> yeah, yes, and inside we have all all memory. Oh, that's so you cool. Understand? <laughs> your hire, your hire is composition to the many person too, and we have something reflexive, something uh, a little bit angry because it's for defense, right? Sometimes we need to defend self, <laughs> and sometimes we have a very beautiful person becoming here, uh, a very expressive. Uh, face uh i don't know who is this wow that's intense. some flowers is coming because gently uh personal gently and stable and gently uh some dreamer you saw this is dreamer um i saw before one cat but now i lost because it's full of person this feels Egyptian almost to me. Yes, it's something, but maybe Ariana is from Italy, right? We have a DNA mix from South Africa, Arian people, and we are, uh, our DNA is uh, a mix. We are the, we are 
coming from the heart to the Mediterranean Sea. Inside on uh, bloods, we have uh, part of the old continent, but from Africa, from Greece, from East, from mm, North, very from ancient. Spain, from yeah. everywhere, from Egypt too. And it's coming so beautiful. Wow. Uh, I, I scroll very slow and then you saw. Yeah. Wow. Well, you'll send it to us. That's wow. Beautiful. Wow. Yeah. So this is completely sorry disturbed this. That's your psyche, Ariane. <laughs> crazy. I love that. Oh my God. I, right, I'm gonna I wrap up it. the the Zoom recording. Wow. There yeah, we are, the three good. of us. It's okay. <laughs> oh, thank you, Chelio. Thank you. We love you. I love you. Love you so much. Thank you to everyone who's on Zoom. I'm gonna end the recording right now. Thank you, Ariane. You can stay on though. Thank you, guys. Okay. Bye. Thank you so much.